Salutations everybody, this is a Burf Lost Squid making a splash, and today we're going to be talking about how you can figure out the draw calls for your world in Unity. Uh, pretty straightforward, I'm going to get into it by first starting what exactly are draw calls. If you already know what that is, go ahead and just skip ahead. This is just for people who don't really know what the hell that means. So when your computer has to render something, it is a two-man team between your CPU and your graphics card. First, your CPU says, okay, what needs to be drawn, and then does a little calculation, and then sends that information to your graphics card, which will then draw it. Now, each of these calculations is known as a draw call, and this is happening every single frame. So, if you have too many draw calls, then your frame rate goes down because your CPU can't keep up. So, you want a lot of not those. Uh, and I'm very sorry for the gross oversimplification, but that's, that's basically the concept. So now, actually figuring out what your draw calls are, there are three main methods on how to do that, and I'm going to go over it from simplest to most complex. So to start out, though, all of these need the exact same thing, which is a main camera, and I've already positioned mine in this corner. If you do not have a main camera, you can just right-click camera, uh, tag it as main camera, and make it uh, target display 1. So once you actually have a main camera, you can go ahead and just hit play to run your scene. And depending on the complexity of the scene, that might take a hot minute. So now I have the scene running, and you can see over here I'm in game mode. Not in scene mode, game mode. And that is important, because it is only in game mode when the scene is running that you have the option over here for stats. So you click that, and ta-da, here are your draw calls. They are known as batches up here. Now, I want to clarify one thing, is that batches and draw calls are not necessarily the same thing, but practically they are. It's very, it's a big technical versus practicality debate, and I don't fully understand it myself. But essentially, for basic information, batches is draw calls. You also have this thing, set pass calls, which you might think are draw calls, but they're not. Set pass calls are more like when your graphics card has to switch gears because it's rendering a different shader. To my understanding, again, I'm very oversimplifying things that I don't fully understand myself, but that's about the gist of it. Uh, over here, you also have saved by batches, which means that you have stuff labeled as static batching, and then Unity was smart and says, okay, we can put these onto the same draw call. Normally, you would have a lot more than 25, but because of how I did my world, uh, a lot of it is not going to work like that. You should expect that number or hope for that number to be a little bit higher. But let's say you want just a little more information than that. That is perfectly fine. We are now going to go to Window and we're going to click Profiler and it will open up this big window that has lots and lots of information and it's a little scary and a little intimidating but don't worry because most of this we don't really need to care about. The uh, important thing is rendering so just click that window of rendering and this is the information you are looking for. So here's set pass calls, and then the actual draw call count. And you can see it's actually a little higher than batches. So batches is not necessarily reliable, but this is. This is the actual draw call count. It'll also tell you tries, vertices, things that are being dynamically batched, things that are static batched, and instancing. Now here is the fun thing, uh, is that my instancing is zero. But all of the items I have on all of these shelves are actually not static, these are instanced. But, I can see here on this, according to this, none of these are being instanced. So, here we have a problem. All the items over here should be instanced. But, we can see with this that they are not being instanced. And, now we don't know what the hell is going on, and instancing is very finicky. You might start pulling out your hair trying to figure out why it's not working how it should. But, there's a much simpler way to figure that out. Uh, the first way to do that is to just click Open Frame Debugger right here, but uh, just to help explain things, I'm going to not do it that way. I'm going to close the profiler, and instead I'm going to go back to Window, and I'm going to just go down to Frame Debugger. Then, all you have to do is click Enable, and what it will do is it will pause the scene for you and give you the breakdown. Also, what will happen is that sometimes when you pause the scene, it will jump straight back into the scene view, and you don't want that. So if it does happen, make sure it puts you back into game view. Because the cool thing about the frame debugger is it will literally show you how it builds the scene draw call by draw call. So I like to use the slider up here and drag it all the way to the end. And then you can use your right arrow key to just... So as you go down the list, uh, you will see each individual part being built. And down here, it will tell you why it's not being drawn in the same draw call. 
So, let's go back a little bit. So starting from the first thing, uh, we can go to the second one. Objects are light mapped. Uh, objects have different materials, different materials, light mapped, light map, light map, different material, different material, light map, light map. Uh, affected by different reflection probes, light mapped. I'm not actually sure what it means by objects are light mapped in terms of why it can't draw that into the same thing. I think that means it's on a different light map and it's just not telling us that. But you'll see that a lot of this comes down to objects being on different materials. So, what you can infer with that is that having too many materials in your scene will actually cause more lag. So it isn't the number of meshes that matters. It is actually the number of materials that matter because Unity cannot draw two materials in the same draw call. So that's why people are always talking about atlasing your materials. The less materials you have, the less draw calls you have. It's a very directly proportional thing. So I'm going to keep going down the list until it gets to my pickups. Uh, oh, I think we're in there right now. So yeah, Holy's Beans are one of the pickups I have in this map. And you'll see that it says the objects are affected by different light probes. And if I hold this down, that seems to be the problem with all of these. Light probe, light probe, light probe. Different material, light probe, different material, light probe. And that's basically it. So what we can infer from this is that I have too many light probes and that is preventing my objects from being instanced. So if I wanted to increase the performance of my world, I would actually need less light probes in order for them to instance correctly. Oh yeah, and then down at the bottom here uh, will be post-processing. So uh, this is called the Bloom Pyramid. So you can see that this adds like 10 draw calls or so. So do keep in mind that post-processing does add extra draw calls, not by much, but you know, if you're really squeezing those frames, then yeah, post-processing is actually adding some stuff. So there we go, that's all 203 of my draw calls. Uh, if you didn't really understand what all of that just was, I'll give you the quick takeaway. The takeaway is, it is not actually the number of meshes that matters, it is the number of materials. Materials are directly proportional to draw calls. It doesn't matter if you merge stuff into one object because the different materials are still being rendered separately anyway. Post-processing also adds about like 12 draw calls. And if you have a lot of pickups in your world, then you should not have too many light probes in order for those to be instanced correctly. So that's it, that's all I have to say today. Normally at the end of these videos, I would say that videos are a product of their time and things may change in the future and that can still hold true, but saying that this is something that relies on Unity and not VRChat, then this is very likely to still be relevant in future versions of Unity and VRChat. So thanks for watching. Maybe check out my other tutorials. Maybe you don't. Uh, I don't really care that much. Uh, bye.